So I just want to continue with the next presentation. Okay. Um, I need your attention, please. So we would like to continue with our second presentation. It's on creating an off-the-shelf implementable computer by Do Cooper. And we would like to give a, a great love. Uh, we would like to thank our sponsor. The gold level sponsor is Saint Mary University USA, Trend Micro, Digital Defense, Sense. And the silver level, silver level are National Security Agency, Exabeam, Accenture Federal Services, Open Security, Titanium Level, CyberSec Jobs, Denim Group, Landmark Solutions. So thank you for all of our sponsor and thank you, you all, thank you all for being here and be a part of the presentation. So Do Cooper will continue now. Thank you. Hey guys. Can anybody hear me on this? Okay, so then I won't hold it. That's good. Is it actually on? Okay, that's why I was like, you said it's only video, or is this actually being recorded too? Okay, then I will hold it. Because the way you made it sound, it sounded like this isn't even being used. So I don't want to hold a prop if it's just a prop. I'd rather hold something a lot more fun. It's like, come on, give me a flamethrower. All right, well. As I'm catching my breath and sweating in puddles up here, sorry, I've been helping uh, with uh, Hardware Hack and Locksport, both villages, so if I'm out of breath, that's why. I'm also fat and out of shape, so I, I do apologize for what you have to view today. I am shiny, there's a reason why. But anyway, uh, thanks for coming to uh, my little chaos, and yes, this, if you've come to the right room for implantable computer talk, you're here. The right place. If you're looking for something else, well, go now while you still can. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about some terms. Start off with uh, what's a cyborg, because often enough when somebody gets an implant, at least lately, people have been calling them cyborgs with just an implant, not like a full limb or replacement or something like that. I've always thought of cyborgs as being like something out of Shadowrun, and this is just one first step towards it, best, best case we can do. And what is biohacking? Well, you can't get shell on a person, at least until I get the computer inside somebody. Then you can theoretically get shell on them. It's basically do-it-yourself bio biology or evolution, depending on who you talk to. And last uh, term that often used is grinder. No, it's not the dating app. If you're here for the dating app, sorry. That's somebody else's talk, not mine. And speaking of implants, you know, there are, in biohacking, there could be implants and penetration testing. Again, not this talk, not my device. This is not the kind of computer that you have come for. If you have, move along, move along. And yes, I am a Star Wars fan and I do abuse it. But implants, this is more the kind of implants that I talk about. And apparently somebody left a toy here. Five dollars to the first person that wants a monitor. You must tackle the individual and take it from him. If you want to speak to that individual, go by the Hardware Hacking Village and enjoy getting help with him troubleshooting our challenge today. But anyway, you might be wondering what kind of crazy people I got to work with me. Well, me, I'm the I'm the idiot that puts the electronics together. Plus, we have cassocks who's the guy that's doing the coatings and the actual implantation of the device. And of course, we need somebody that will actually take the device. That happens to be Anastasia Sen. She's a professional cyborg magician and the host of the device. And she, to quote, she said, I don't care how big it is, just put it in me. <laughs> yeah, no. It, uh, the challenge was to create a prototype, proof of concept, basically taking off the shelf anything I can find, slap it together, to do a stupid pe person trick, as she so put it. Because she wanted to do a card trick using a computer implanted in her. That wasn't enough for me. I wanted to make it a little bit harder. Because why, why create a device and put it inside somebody that just sniffs NFC? Why not add a little Bluetooth and some Wi-Fi on, the, on there too? Who, who doesn't want to run kismet from inside of someone's body? 
but what are the what's going to be the results truly open source implant that you can take improve upon it yes i'm sure somebody in this room can improve upon it and then share the results except for the coding sorry we're not sharing that we'll be glad to code it for you whatever you come up with but we're not we're not sharing that part that's the actual product the the computer is just a proof of concept so you might be thinking what's the possible dangers of putting something random inside of a person's body hmm i don't know if you're a fan of uh evil dead or army of darkness but if you're not please google later watch it learn enjoy don't blame me if you don't like it if you don't like it you have no bad taste and you shouldn't be in this talk because this talk the humor is free and because it's free it's bad <laughs> and when it comes down to it truly what are the possible dangers well you know I believe it was like the note 7 that would blow up in people's pockets catch fire with lithium ion packs they do catch fire and uh, we I don't want to catch my friend on fire I don't want to catch other people on fire so that is a possibility now dealing with magnets it's another type of implant there is heavy metal poisoning if the coating fails and uh, also if you don't put it in properly if you choose to do it say in your kitchen with vodka and steak knives non sterile surface well you could get uh, infections possible sepsis possible death looks like I got a repeat slide sorry about that but anyway you might be wondering how do I get upgrades how do I get some of these implants well the common way is an injection like the, the slide a couple couple slides ago was uh, size of grain of rice that's a most often uh, most common type of implant these days NFC or RFID people use it as like a secure key so you know I don't know about y'all but I carry enough stuff with me just as me I don't need keys or other stuff in me so might as well have that for front door motorcycle what I, what I have you what are the possible advantages hmm better grip better what have you if you go as far as this guy did but hopefully not everybody's up for that kind of uh, super changes yet so you might be wondering why I'm up here. Uh, why am I talking to you? Why am I sweating on this poor defenseless computer? Uh, well, I've, right now I've got six implants. I used to have seven. Uh, the seventh was a PCB that I had in my middle finger. It worked great as a digital business card when I was talking to recruiters because uh, I'm sorry if there are recruiters in here. If you don't have a sense of humor, well, that's your fault for coming because if, when they asked for my contact info, I said, here, scan this. <laughs> exactly the kind of response I was hoping for. <laughs> if, you just, if you sat there looking at me blank, I'd be like, I'm sorry. <laughs> you should probably go. This is only going to get worse. But currently, in my left hand, I've got a NFC, uh, which is... Uh, in the web of my hand it's also my front door key and if you scan it it will rickroll you and that way i can know you're trying to get the uid for my front door and i'll be like if i think that you're never going to give me up never going to let me down then i know that you're trying to get my front door key and i'm just like dude come on what are you doing the other is an rfid chip that's in hid mode which is basically a high security a badge for work still active on the job that I used to have two years ago and I use occasionally when I go back and visit it's, it's funny because then they're like I told the system admin six months ago to turn that off and throw it away and I laugh going well that's your fault not mine you should have made me a system admin in my right hand I have another RFID in EM mode uh, it's Often enough, uh, can be used uh, at a local hacker space, uh, known as Can Opener Labs. As well, it uh, once I get it working again, it will be my motorcycle key. And I also have a digital business card to replace my PCB. 
That's on the back of my hand since I had to take that out. I also have two body temperature sensors in the arm, armpit that uh, once I get the wearable working, well, I'll be able to track my core temperature over time and hopefully get some working Python scripts to be able to tell me, hey, you're hot, maybe you should sit down and hydrate. Because right now, I'd love to sit down and just hydrate. <laughs> and then it would then tell me when I'm back to normal temperature and say, all right, get up and go back to walking, fat boy. And uh, so you might be wondering, why do people do this? Often enough, it's, you know, better physical security, better keys, because if you don't know how bad keys are, don't know how bad handcuffs are, please go by the Locksport Village and learn how easy it is to bypass. 15 seconds, you can open up the most common lock known to man, which is cruddy $10 master lock. You see them everywhere. Worst mistake anybody can make, because it keeps only law-abiding citizens from getting in. Now, there's also cosmetic applications where you can implant LEDs or tritium vials to have like a glow-in-the-dark uh, spot in your hand, as well as you can expand your own senses through magnets, uh, and be able to de detect electric, uh, electrical fields like from microwaves, etc. So, see if I can. Okay, that apparently the video is not working. So, oh, so it's not on my screen. Thank you, Mac. But anyway, that is an implanted LED, and it's being exposed to an RFID field right now. That's why you see a white, uh, white blinky light on there. So if you like blinky things, blinky badges. This is a blinky badge you never forget at home. And it doesn't get interrupted in shipments from China. That's what happened to our badges this year. Sorry, they'll be in Monday. And we'll work out details on how to get them later. Now, magnets are a way to get implanted headphones. Like you see the one guy with the bottle opener. He's got a different kind of magnet than the other individual. Now, how do you transfer the music from your phone to your implant? That'd be the coil and small device that he has plugged into his phone. It's actually an instructable, but it has become an implant through coded implants in the guy on the right. And also, uh, the guy on the left has a glass encapsulated magnets that are injectable. Those just came out and I helped, uh, bring those out. Now, Hopefully this video will start working. Do I have to click it? Yeah, I do. Okay. Mental note made. Click the thing. But that's uh, Can Opener Labs here in town using the RFID on me. And what? Okay. Not what I wanted. <laughs> now this is a MyFair based implant here being used in Utah with mass transit. So that way you're getting the beginnings of replacing parts of your wallet by what's in your body. Now, other magnets can be used for magnetic sense. Here's somebody with a small sensing magnet playing with a, one of my prototypes. And uh, unfortunately I should have taken video because what she described, what she was sensing playing with the prototype was Pretty interesting, to say the least. But back to the challenge. Why? Why are we putting a magnet in a person other than it's fun and it's kind of cool and anybody can do it, theoretically, if you're brave enough to let it be put in you? It's uh, It started with a device that's about the size of a messenger bag called an RF-tastic thief. You can use the sniff RFID or NFC uh, car, security cards and duplicate them during like a pen test. Now I started making a, a wearable version of it to not to have to, uh, carry around a messenger bag during a pen test. Uh, my idea was like have a gauntlet on, uh, underneath my hoodie. So it's one less thing I have to worry about fumble with. But off the shelf, what does that mean? Raspberry Pi, my friend. Total open open source hardware, 
runs Windows, runs Linux, easiest thing ever. But it's freaking huge. You don't want to put that in some, inside somebody's body, especially with several hats on it, so, uh, so did, uh, associated dongles and antennas. That thing would probably be bigger than my leg. Let's not go there. So I went a little bit smaller with an A. Still not small enough. Too much power consumption, what have you. So we went smaller with the uh, uh, Pi Zero uh, for our quickly building, uh, fastly building proto prototype. But you might be wondering why a Pi? Because all the hats that are readily available on the on the market. It's just ridiculous all the different kind, kinds of hats they got out there. Especially when you got five different ones to choose from for battery and recharging capabilities, but then you destroy all five trying to find out which one works. Yeah. So, yeah. When I'm involved, of course, unfortunately, the question is not to stick with the challenge, it's how over-engineer can I make it? How complicated can I make the problem? Why? Because I'm dumb. This is why I say you can probably take the design and make it so much better. Because there's so much redundant junk on there, it's ridiculous. I had to actually just strip it down just to Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and NFC, of course. Because that's the original challenge that there was. Instead of adding an accelerometer and other stuff we're not going to go into. Because, yeah, my wife's in the audience. You know, I don't want to make her tell me later why were you trying to do something silly like this. But anyway, what were some of the problems that re really stumped me along the way was, well, the hat for the recharging, it's got a switch on it. And I found easily with inductive charging, if you leave it on, it works great. Then you can code it, it'll be fine. Except when you recharge it. It recharges slower, the battery pack heats up a lot quicker, and you have just a lot of problems, especially fire. So I tried to switch to the most common switch that you can flick with an implanted magnet to turn it off and on, which was a reed switch. It's basically like a mechanical switch that's basically in a wire encased in glass that you can uh, manipulate with a magnet to turn it off and on again. Yeah. Of course, with you know, open source hardware and software, you're going to have to turn it off and on again for updates and just keep it unfrozen. So. Actually, in Body Hacks Con this past January, somebody from the audience said, I should use a Hall Effect sensor. Brilliant. It's solid state. It's not mechanical. Still affected by a magnet, so it can easily be encased instead of a switch. This is why I've been giving these talks, to get help further when I don't know what to do else to do to fix the thing. So then, yeah, one of the biggest problems is recharging it how to recharge a lithium um, pack inside the body without setting fire to it. Yeah, building your own charging circuit and charger, not advised. I can attest why. Fire, fire bad, fire inside person, so much worse. Turns out Adafruit had a great little kit with a safety circuit built in, according to them, after uh, bugging their tech support saying, all right, what parts do you have? What have you? Is there something that keeps it from overcharging and sending fire? And they asked me, why is that a concern? I said, well, it's going inside a human body. And they said, excuse me, what? <laughs> what are you doing? Why are you doing it? I said, uh, come see the talk and laugh. And they said the, the circuit would hopefully prevent that so far. We're about to move into the coding phase. So current state of the build, yep. About to send five prototypes to my buddy Cassix so he can code them. Then we can charge them, see if we break the coding, what have you, um, seepage into it, bad, short circuit, what have you, bad. Probably fire, because it catches fire regardless anyway, right? So yeah, once we figure out how to build it, and how to code it and not set fire to our friends because that's the eventual goal to not set fire to our friends at least that's what i tell myself that's going to be taking everything we've learned and put it on a single board so we can then code it again 
and then, then it's a product. First, the phase one, everything we've learned, all the parts, they'll be up there in a list and say, here, take it, along with the software, because the software that's running it is already open source. Got permission to use it, but since it was a buddy of mine that's in Houston, but it, he had the same reaction Adafruit had when I asked him, is it okay if I use this for putting it in the human body? And he was like, excuse me, what'd you say? In the human body, what for? Is this for a special pen test? Are you wanting to put it in me? No, no, no. It's like, no, of course I knew you wouldn't take it. You don't even want a glass capsule. And you, why would you want something the size of a pack of cigarettes in you? And he's like, that's still big. I was like, tell me about it. It's, I'm trying to make it smaller. Trust me, I am. But when it comes down to it, where, ah, of course. Yeah. Nice resolution problems this morning. But anyway, um, just got this URL. Once we are ready to publish, go to it. We'll have everything in, up there for you all to take, including direct link to the GitHub for the software so that hopefully somebody in here will take it, build it, make it better, and then share what they've learned along the way so I can learn something too. But that's the whole point of this talk is just to say, hey, anybody, even this idiot can make something cool to put in somebody's body. Now the challenge is on you once it's published to do something else to inspire somebody else. And if you want to know more about biohacking in general, please go to dangerousminds.io. It's where we actually reach out to pe professionals that do this for their li actual living, not just because they like a challenge and don't want to set fire to their friends again. But um, go to it, we talk to them, we find out why they got into it, how they got into it, and what projects they're working on, as well as what projects they need help on. Because if you want to get involved, that's an easy way to do it. Learn from the experts, and instead of just trying to do it on your own. Because you've got to learn first before you, before you can do it in the end. And this is a buddy of mine I, I, got, to, I got to know uh, last weekend up in Indiana at Circle City Con. He's uh, one of the two guys that's part of Mr. Blinky Bling, which helped us have kits for the Hard Racking Village uh, that's available today over in the other building, where you can learn basic soldering skills, what have you. And those come in handy, especially in builds like this. Desoldering, especially. So please put in LEDs backwards so you have to desolder and resolder. Anyway, if you want to, if you want to know, have any questions, what have you, feel free to ask now. This is, we've got just a few minutes left. Plus, if you so desire to get an implant, I actually have some with me today. Just got to find me, whether I'm in the hardware hacking village or the locksport village, because I'm running both and I will probably not be sitting down very long in either one. Just got to find me. That you'll be able to find out along with the other technical um, specs on the web website. Um, not releasing any anything right now, not yet. Because <sighs> one, we also want to uh, release exact endurance levels, what have you. But we're just trying to get through the st uh, stability phase of it. Yeah, no, I was just curious. I asked a question because you were talking about some Yeah. I'm sorry? Please repeat the question. I was curious if you're not sure if you have to do these Yeah. He was wanting to know the power requirements for the device. And that's why I said tech specs, I'm not releasing at all right now. Is, is that what you said? Okay, because I couldn't hear you. Apparently, my wife has better ears than me. I'm not surprised. She's a teacher. Can you tell? Piezo electricity have not even looked at that yet. I'll probably have to Google later and see what you're talking about. <laughs> hey, that's what this is. Half of the time you're like, oh, that's cool. What is he saying? <laughs> especially the, you know, especially this uh, podcast. Like when I was talking to Oliver Medivic uh, up at, out of Brooklyn, he works with CRISPR Cas9 to basically extend life. And half the time I had uh, two laptops 
open, you know, one running the podcast, the other Googling what in the devil he was talking about with probably 30 tabs open in the browser trying to keep up with him. While my co-host was like, I don't know what's going on. What, what's next? What's the next question? I, I, I lost track five minutes ago or 15 minutes ago because the guy was just rambling on way up here and we're just like, I don't know what he's saying. He said something about an enzyme. What? Uh, at first, we were thinking it was some sort of device that he was chopping uh, DNA, gluing it together. No, it's an enzyme where he do black magic on genetic engineering. Still don't fully understand it, but that's not my field. I don't have to. I'm a computer guy. I'm a hardware guy. But anyway. Yeah, it's all inductive charging for the most part. Uh, but as far as, uh, except for one, because it there is no recharging on the North Star put out by uh, Grindhouse Wetware. Their first version is just a proof of concept, just like phase one of this is just a proof of concept uh, to satisfy the individual that set the challenge. And they didn't have an uh, re uh, charging circuit on it. It's just, it goes and then it's done. Then you got to pull it out and replace the battery or solder into it and charge it somehow. But basically it's done because it's encased. You're not going to break it out. It then becomes a wonderful high tech paperweight. Um, their other, uh, project they had is called, a uh, Cicadia, which is basically a bio sensor that is, uh, rechargeable through inductive charging. But that's the easiest way when you're going through meat. It's not like you can, you know, have a nice little USB port there. That'd be nice, because uh, if you did, then it'd be like a regular implantees having a hookup to, for their prosthetic. It's an open wound, always will be an open wound. Won't fully heal. So that's definite possibility of, um, you know, infection and complications later on. We don't want to deal with that. When you have implantable implant he was asking about implants and uh, MRI. Yeah, I, this time I actually remembered to restate the question. All right, so MRI, uh, only with high uh, HD, um, high Tesla MRIs, is there a chance for damage to the implantables uh, as far as like RFID, NFC chips? As far as magnets, I wouldn't suggest it. Um, but uh, if you talk to the technician running it, and if they have any experience working with shrapnel, then they'll know to do like a constrictive bandage to basically immobilize uh, what's in you, what have you, to make it less less of an issue. You probably still would not want to like MRI your hand if you got a magnet in it. Wouldn't suggest it. it it'll, you'll get a, at least a tug. It will not be comfy, but it won't rip it out if you because uh, they'll shut it down as soon as it's uncomfortable. Because that's a huge machine and expensive machine. Don't want to take a chance on it. Anybody else? All right. Well, thanks for coming, and I hope to see you all over at Locksport or the Hardware Hacking Village.